Today we're talking about something that you've asked me about for a long time. Mass A's, extreme English. Uh, we're going to get into this, we're going to get into it in depth. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about that shot I just did. Um, which, by the way, that was the first time I tried that. That was actually on the first take. I expected to have to do two or three takes to get it right, but it uh, worked out for me. So, uh, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about, first we're going to discuss speed. I've been asked about it and it just so happens that it was asked at the perfect time because speed is everything when we're talking about English and we're talking about especially getting extreme English like what you just saw me make, uh, which was technically a mass A shot. Uh, they're beautiful shots, very hard to pull off, very low percentage, definitely a specialty shot. Uh, some of these are more special than others. That's probably the most special shot I'll show you in this, is how to do those. Um, the, uh, the main thing that I want to cover, uh, in, and this is probably going to go over several parts, so we're going to talk about uh, English and the speed of English, uh, and the speed of the shot and how it affects the English. Um, we'll probably go ahead and cover uh, some, some examples of when to use extreme English uh, and when they make sense. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of shots. Uh, we're going to talk about doubling the rail, uh, a different way of doubling the rail than the ticky that we did. Uh, we're going to talk about some minor mass A shots. We're going to talk about uh, in, in this part, um, I may do the whole thing, I may not, uh, just setting you up, this may only be half of it, there may be a second part to it. Um, we're going to cover all of those shots that require English above and beyond. We're going to talk about the full table draw, we're going to talk about some, some uses of Mass A that are not obvious at first look. Um, we're, we're going to talk about pretty much everything there is to talk about with regards to extreme English. And when I say extreme English, I'm not talking about, you know, the draw shot that, that looks like it's on a string and it gets jerked back. I'm not talking about that kind of English. Uh, that's just normal draw. It just it's a, it's a function of momentum. We might talk about it a little during the momentum and speed portion that we're going to start with. Um, so with that, um, I certainly, if you have questions, ask them. This is not a uh, very easy area, uh, and, and you're going to find that we're going to talk. We, we could talk about the math behind these shots and how to figure them out, um, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't keep a slide rule in my pocket when I shoot, uh, and you would need one. So uh, we'll talk about functionally how you use these things in a game. How, how you would take advantage of this knowledge and put it to use in real life scenarios. Now again, this is extreme English, it's definitely a specialty shot. You're going to have quite a few cases where, uh, where it doesn't apply. It's going to be very rare when you want to get to this level of English. But we're going to talk about it so that you have another tool in your bag. Uh, and, and this is getting into this is getting into those shots that are just sometimes a bit on the crazy side, uh, and, and we'll see some. So, with that said, I'm going to start off by talking about speed. I'm going to talk about control shots. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, effects that you can get by controlling your speed. Things like drag draw. Uh, and, and the minor curves, um, not mass A's, but where you just kind of curve around the ball. We're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about deflection and swerve and how those come into play uh, and, and how those uh, actually work. We talked about them in another video about deflection and swerve, but we're going to talk about it a little bit here too because it comes very much into play. Uh, for example, what that mass A shot I just made was was it was a combination of deflection and swerve that make that shot work. And if you don't know about those concepts, you won't be able to make that shot, or you'll foul against one of the other balls. So with that said, uh, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to talk about speed first. Um, so 
One of the questions I get asked a lot when I'm shooting is, what's the right speed? And you'll see me. When I shoot, sometimes I shoot hard, sometimes I slow roll. Uh, I have this wide variation in speed. But my normal stroke is what they call pocket speed. So what is pocket speed? Pocket speed is when you hit the shot just hard enough that your object ball goes down to the lip and falls in. It doesn't hit the back of the pocket. It's just enough to get to that very edge and fall in. Um, why, why is that the gauge? Why is that your normal strike or stroke? Um, that is the, the stroke because if you're going to, when, when you shoot, that is the slowest stroke that you can make and still make the ball. And you want, it, you want to shoot slow. You don't want to shoot hard unless you absolutely have to. Even on that Mass A, you, it, it made a lot of noise because the cue ball was hitting into the table. But you notice the cue ball didn't go flying around the table. It went out and it got just enough to make the one hit the nine. And that's all that was there. It's pocket speed. It's getting it to fall in the pocket, not hit the pocket, not bounce around. Now, why, why, why is pocket speed important? Well, let's take this shot, for example. Now, this table is a Brunswick. The angles are a little wider than they are on, say, an Olhausen or a, uh, or a diamond, especially, um, meaning that the angle to the pocket is tighter and they tend to reject balls more. Um, and if you take a shot like this down the rail and you shoot it really hard, well, so I'm actually used to shooting this, uh, the idea is that when you shoot hard and it hits this pocket, this, this edge of the pocket here, um, when you hit, hit there, it naturally deflects this way. And so if you hit really hard on a table where the pockets are a little more closed than these are, the ball will hit and it'll just bounce back and forth. We've all seen it. You hit a ball too hard and it bounces back and forth. Well, if you hit at pocket speed, it doesn't have enough strength to get here and it makes it fall in. It actually makes it easier. Um, it makes the shot more likely to go in with the same shot. It gives you a wider variance. Uh, you can be more wrong and still be right. Um, and you hear me talk about probabilities all the time. That's why we shoot pocket speed, because your probability of making the ball goes up if you hit it pocket speed to the maximum it can possibly be. Um, there is no shot on the table where shooting it hard makes it more likely to go in, uh, with the exception of some one rail banks, and we've already talked about how bad an idea those are, uh, unless they're just straight back and forth. Um, so from a making the ball perspective, the perfect stroke is one that's just fast enough to get the ball to fall in. That's all you want. You don't need any more. When you hit it harder, the reason you're hitting it harder is because you want to minimize the effects of English. We've talked about that. When you hit a ball slow, the English throws the object ball more uh, than when you hit it fast. Um, We've also talked about um, you know, the rails. When you hit it hard, the English makes it come short off the rails. Uh, when you hit it soft, the English makes it go long. When you throw a ball, if you hit it soft, it throws more than, throws the cue ball more than if you hit it hard. Um, so when you're varying your stroke, when, when you're practicing, and you're practicing shots, your stroke should be consistently just enough to get the ball in the pocket. And right now you're saying to me, but I have to hit it harder sometimes to get the English I need. Well, let me, let me show you something. I'm going to hit this ball two different speeds with draw. First, I'm going to hit it soft with draw, and, and no side spin, just draw. And then I'm going to hit it hard with draw. Okay, that was actually kind of hard, um, but you saw I didn't hit it that hard. I didn't slam it into the pocket, uh, and you saw it drew back to the back to the rail about six inches off, right? So here's the same shot with with power and draw.
maybe an extra six inches. The reason that they're so close, the reason that that cue ball doesn't take off is because your spin has to overcome, when you're talking about draw and follow, your spin has to overcome the momentum of the cue ball before it takes effect. So when I hit that ball hard, I've got a lot of momentum behind it, and I know it didn't actually show you what I wanted to show you, but um, it had a lot of momentum behind it, so it was moving fast this way, and all this momentum was going that way. When it hit, the momentum transfers to the one ball, that's why it slams into the pocket, but the cue ball still has some momentum this way if you hit it really hard. Uh, and because it's still, and I may just have gotten a better stroke on that ball, but because you hit it really hard, it's got all this momentum this way, then it hits that ball, and we hit a full ball, so we got a 100% transfer of English, uh, or of momentum, which means this ball, the momentum was killed, and that ball picked up all the momentum, and then the spin took effect, right? So it was moving this way, it hit the ball, Newton again, equal and opposite reaction, all that good stuff. Um, caused the momentum from the cue ball to transfer to the other ball. The other ball went in. This ball then had no forward momentum and started to back up. Now, when those shots that you've seen where the cue ball continues forward and then jerks back, um, what's happened there is it's typically on a pool table where the cue ball and the object balls are not the same mass. Uh, it happens because the cue ball has more mass than the object ball does. And so when it hits it, the object ball flies in, the cue ball still has some leftover momentum that carries it forward a little bit, then, then the friction causes the momentum to die off. Once the momentum is gone, the spin takes effect and it and hauls butt that way, right? Um, so for normal shots though, whether you hit them soft or you hit them hard, you get the same distance. Sometimes it's caused because you've got momentum. You don't get as much English, but you get more momentum. Sometimes it's caused before because you have more spin and less momentum. So you get, you know, more less friction off the off the cloth, uh, but you've got less forward momentum, and so therefore it still drags back. And it, and the cloth really comes into play. That's <coughs> that's why. An older cloth like this um, plays differently than a new piece of cloth is because of the varying friction of the cloth. Uh, so <clears throat> when, I'm, when I'm playing and I'm playing well, I'm typically hitting everything pocket speed with just enough extra to get my lead. Um, so I'll, I'll be shooting and at pocket speed. And, and if I'm shooting really well, you'll see me doing this consistently. I'm just wandering the balls in and getting my leaves. Um, sometimes when I'm in dead stroke, you'll see me get up and I'll start shooting stuff in like this, where I'm just pounding it in. And I'm doing that because I'm in that particular mode. Uh, you know, we call it dead stroke, but. Um, it means you can't, it's those days when you can't miss. You'll, you'll see me shooting stuff like that harder than normal. Um, the downside is I'm letting the cue ball go. Notice that cue ball I almost scratched because I hit it so hard it went around the table. Uh, and cue ball control is, is extremely important. Um, and it's easier to control the cue ball on a soft shot as well. It's not just making the balls, it's also easier to control the cue ball. So, so I tend to want to shoot pocket speed, just enough for the ball to get there and fall in. I don't want to hit the back of the pocket. Um, if it's got to hit the rail, I might hit it a little tiny bit harder, just so that it <clears throat> doesn't die on the rail and just sit there. But pocket speed is what I want. Now, the, the important thing for our extreme English discussion is that the harder you hit the cue ball, the more momentum you have. We know that. Uh, if we're trying to get extreme top English, for example, we have to hit this hard because we have to not only have the momentum, but we also have to have the top English still spinning and not losing to the carpet. 
So, as, as an example, if I hit this, if I hit this shot slow, and just put that right in the pocket so you can see it. If I hit it slow, my English doesn't overcome the momentum that the cue ball has when it bounces off that rail. It just bounces off and comes back. So if I hit it slow, cue ball just rolls off the rail and, and comes out, right? But I hit that same shot, and I had top English on that. I hit that same exact shot, but I hit it harder, and we start to get some pretty cool effects. Wait, what happened there? The cue ball hit here, it hit the rail, it came out, and then it spun that way. Why did it do that? Because we had more spin than we had momentum. So the spin was able to overcome the momentum, but it was, so when I shot it, it was spinning this way, right? It was spinning in this direction. So you would think that it would hit it, come out, and just spin straight back, but it doesn't. Why? Because you have momentum this way, which causes it to come out and then the spin wasn't enough to drive it straight back to the rail. It, so it started to come back this way, but the momentum canceled out. And where'd we go? We went on a 45 degree, or well, roughly a 90 degree angle from the initial momentum. So the initial momentum was this way. We went on a 90 degree angle uh, because of the cancellation of the momentum and the uh, cloth and the actual path wasn't nice. It didn't come out and then go that way. It came out and it curved to that way. So you got to always remember that curve. And you can take advantage of that sometimes. Um, this is a very famous old shot. Uh, very well known. Uh, and the idea is that you put top English on it and shoot that ball in. And again, we're looking at that same 90 degree angle. And basically, we take advantage of that curve. Oop. Took too much advantage of the curve. I had too much spin. So you can see, I hit it hard, so I had a lot of spin. It did Because of the combination of the transfer of momentum to the two ball and the lost momentum to the rail, uh, it, the spin overcame it a whole lot and came straight back. So there's kind of a... a there's there's kind of a um, what's what's the word I'm looking for? There's a trade-off between speed and spin. See there again, um, I lost most of the momentum to the two ball, and so the cue ball hit here, and then it hit here. That's that's part of the reason that these are uh, what I call um, specialty shots. They're they're shots that come up that if you know how to do them, you can do, but they don't always work exactly the way you think they will. And the reason is because of all these multiple variables that are involved. Um, and, and by the way, uh, that doesn't have to be in the pocket for that to work. You can do it against the rail as well. So let's say I'm playing straight pool, right? And I've got this left on the table. Um, so I'm going to rack right here. Uh, so I need to have an angle where the cue ball's over here so that I can shoot the seven in and have the cue ball carry them into the rack. Well, there's, there's a couple ways to do this, but if you just bank the ball and, and make it, well, not exactly where I meant to make it. Um, let me give myself a little bigger angle so I'm not double kissing. So if I just shoot this in with no English and roll it in, okay, that's actually pretty good. I can live with that. Um, but if this is a little, let's, let's say it's a little closer, so I really need to be up against the rail for it. What I can do, what I can do is I can put some top English on this and bury the two ball in the pocket. Well, Jay sucks at this apparently. You get the seven out of the way. Um, I can bury that two ball in the pocket with top English. And, and if I'm too straight in on it, I can use top inside English to shorten up the angle and then hit less of the ball. 
And look what, look what that cue ball did. It just stopped right where I wanted it to. So there's a lot of uses for this. Um, typically that's going to be, for top English, that's about as extreme as I'm going to get. Um, <clears throat> there are shots, uh, especially if you're playing billiards, where you can take a shot like this, <coughs> hit the two ball, have the cue ball, dive into the rail, it comes out, it spins forward, hits two more rails, and then hits a the ball up here. Um, it, it's a pretty pretty nice little shot when it works. Uh, I don't know if the rails on this will support it. They're different rubber. They're different rubber from a uh, billiards table, especially a European one. So I don't know if I'll get what I need out of this. Um, I'm going to try it. It's actually a really pretty shot. I haven't done it in a while. Uh, what the heck. Let's see if we can get this to, to hit this rail, come around the seven, hit those two rails, and then hit the seven. But we're not going to do it if I have a stroke like that. Nope. But again, you see the cue ball came back to this rail. Um, so, top English. You can take advantage of balls that are close to a rail. Um, they don't have to be touching. I know all, everyone I've shown you so far, they've been touching, but they don't actually have to be. Again, you see that action. Uh, someplace I will use this is, uh, let's say I've got a ball that's it's pretty close to the rail. I've got a ball I don't want to don't want to do anything with. And then I've got my next shot somewhere down here, and I want to make sure I guarantee the shot. Uh, you will see me do something like this on occasion, where I hit the ball, hit the rail, and then use top English to spin it around to get my leave. Um, don't do it very often because it's not real reliable, but it is there if you need it. Uh, of course, that's the downside of it. You can very easily stop yourself behind the nine. So. <clears throat> Extreme top English, balls close to the rail. Um, it can be done all the way out until you get to the point where you're a ball away from the rail. You, you can use extreme top English if it's three quarters of a ball from the rail. It'll still take, it'll still work. Um, so remember we were talking about speed. I want to talk about something now called the drag draw shot. And the idea behind this, this is getting back to that momentum thing again. Let's say you're playing on a bar table, and it's not very straight. Um, and you can use this in other shots too, but let's, for, the, for the sake of this first one, let's just say you're playing on a bar table, it's not very straight, you're wanting to slow roll the, the seven in, so you're just going to shoot it soft and let the cue ball just stay down in this area for the nine, right? Well, the problem is that if you were to slow roll it, because the table's crooked, you don't end up getting the, making the shot. Now, of course, my table's not crooked, so you don't see it. But let's say that it's one of those tables where you shoot this way, and the ball goes off to the side, right? This is one way to overcome that, is the drag draw shot. You shoot with momentum that overcomes the spin. So if, it's, if I'm spinning with draw, the cue ball's spinning backwards. Um, the cue ball spinning backwards, it's moving forwards, but it's also dragging against this. So you got the backward spin and the friction of the carpet are both acting to counteract that spin. And what happens is actually pretty cool. The ball stops, the ball loses its spin, and then just naturally rolls forward from the leftover momentum. And it's, it's a pretty cool shot. And you can see there, about here, it got to about here, and then this English reversed and just rolled up. Um, if you hit that harder, uh, <clears throat> if you hit that harder, you can get further down the table before it stops. And again, you, you saw the spin reverse right about in here. So you can control how far down the table it goes before it reverses. Something to be aware of this with this, though, is if you're shooting a straight-in shot, uh, and you do this, 
because that carpet has already eliminated your, your draw, the cue ball is now rolling forward. So if you try to do that on a draw shot or a straight in shot, you run the risk of following it into the pocket. And there I just killed it. So that was similar to a stun shot. It had just the forward momentum and it had no, no spin on it and the seven ball absorbed all the momentum so it didn't go anywhere. But if I do it a little bit softer, now I've got that follow and you can see it follows it in. So you have to be aware of that when you're doing drag draw. Now let me show you a cool use for drag draw. Um, again, I'm shooting at the seven. But I've got a blocker that's just barely in the way. It's not all the way in the way, but it's barely in the way. And you can see if I go straight to the seven, that one ball is just enough in the way to be painful. Well, what I can do is I can drag draw with bottom right hand English, and the cue ball will come out, and then the, the bottom and the right, the, the bottom will, will make it continue forward, and the right will actually make it swerve. enough for me to make the shot. And I know it looks like I just banked, but I actually couldn't see it here. Uh, so, let me do that again so you can see this. Straight shot. Let me pull it back a little because I'm going to talk about something else here on the same shot using this as an example. So, you can see here, that's my best angle. I cannot get to that seven without doing something. So what I do is I hit it bottom right, just enough to get past, and it slides, takes advantage of the rail to kick over. So I just made a shot that, if you didn't use spin, was unmakeable. Again, one more time, I'm hitting it soft, I'm hitting it past the one ball, and then letting it curve back over. Now I'm doing that very deliberately on this shot to get that extra spin to make it. Um, but we have to talk about deflection because deflection actually comes into play on this shot and you can take advantage of it in a pretty cool way. So again, I'm behind the one, partially blocked. Uh, it's enough in the way that I can't hit the rail close enough to make the ball. But something funny happens. When you hit right or left English, if I hit right hand English on this, the cue ball will deflect out to the left. So I hit it straight, but the cue ball, because of where I'm hitting it, pushes out to the left, right? So if I actually aim, if I'm just barely blocked, and I actually aim this shot with as much bottom left as I can get, the cue ball deflects around the one and goes in. And what I did there is I actually shot straight at the seven, and I let that deflection from me hitting the ball, carry the cue ball past the one. So I'm, I'm barely blocked, right? Barely blocked. Can't be made directly. But if I shoot straight at it and I use extreme bottom right, the cue ball curves around the one and goes in and makes it. And it's because it's deflecting this way and then the English is taking it back. So in a way, it's a very, very low impact mass A. I'm pushing it to the left. The cue is, I'm aiming straight at it. You saw me aim straight at it. So the line would actually take me into the one, but because of the deflection from the shaft, uh, and it's not from the shaft, it's, it's from the flex of the shaft, which is why you see predator cues with zero deflection are real popular. Uh, the Muji black dots and red dots. The uh, McDermott has a, a zero deflection shaft. Um, the reason those are popular is because this happens on every shot where you have side English. If you have left or right on it, the cue ball is going to deflect away from the side you're hitting. If you're hitting the right side of the cue ball, cue ball is going to shear off to the left, and then the spin is going to carry it to the right. So, so when you're shooting, you're actually shooting curves. You're not shooting straight shots if you have side English on it. Um, 
So when you think about accuracy, how much harder does that make the shop to make? It makes it much harder. Um, and since you're making it significantly harder to make the shot, you have to have more touch, you have to have more speed control. Uh, it makes a huge difference. So if you have a zero deflection shaft, which this is not, by the way, um, if you have a zero deflection shaft, it still deflects. It just doesn't deflect as much because that's caused by the by the tip of the cue or the shaft of the cue bending on impact and then snapping back, throwing the ball off to that side. If you were to see it in slow motion, you'd see you'd see it bend and then you'd see it snap back, and and that actual throw motion is pushing it away. Um, so I highly recommend zero deflection shafts because the, le the less deflection there is, the less control and touch you have to have to make the same shot. Think about that. If I was shooting this shot at pocket speed, we talked about the, the area that I have to hit to make it runs from about here to about here. Oh, actually, that's too far. It's this little sixteenth of an inch that I have to hit to make that ball in the pocket. So, if I'm going to shoot this same shot at different speeds, I have to know how much deflection I'm going to get in order to make that shot. And if I get it wrong, I'm going to miss the shot. Uh, and, you, and you learn that from, from practice. You, you learn your cue from practice. That's why, that's why pros have their own cues. Because we want all the variables to be the same every time. We shoot with the same cue every time, uh, with the exception of breaks and some specialty shots. Uh, but normally, when we're playing the game, we're shooting with the same cue that we practiced with. We're shooting with all the same equipment. Um, back when I was serious about tournaments, uh, I would play with the same equipment. So if they were using a measle cue ball, I would use a measle cue ball to practice. Uh, because this ball and the blue dot Centennial, which is not in there for some reason. Where's my Centennial? These two balls act completely different. I'm going to hit the same shot, and I'm going to go ahead and put spots down so I can show you this is the exact same shot. I'm going to hit it pocket speed and I'm going to draw it and you'll see that there's a very I'm, I'm going to put maximum draw on it I'll just use the spot okay I'm going to put maximum draw on the ball and I'm going to hit it pocket speed watch the difference between these two balls this is the, these are variables and you need to be aware of these um, so if I shoot this ball at pocket speed, I drew it back. My spot's here. I drew it back to right there, which is about about six inches. It's about six inches. So if I do the same shot, again shooting pocket speed, shooting my normal stroke, my practice stroke, and I hit it with extreme English. Look how much further that drew back. I hit that maybe a little harder. Let me do that again. <coughs> Alright, same shot, same place, same strength, same English. I got almost two and a half times Here's my mark where we drew back to last time. Two and a half times as far from my starting point, and twice as far from where it made contact. It's a variable. So you always practice with what you're going to actually use. Um, house cues, by the way, are typically very, very low deflection, uh, simply because they're they're blocks of hard wood, um, which hurts you. And it hurts in some ways and helps in some ways. Um, but whenever you have the choice, whenever you have the choice, you want to shoot and practice 
with the same equipment that you'll be using in the tournament. Uh, anyhow, so that was kind of a sidebar. Let me get back to the extreme English thing. Um, so we just talked a little bit about deflection and swerve. Um, if I hit the right side of the cue ball, the cue ball deflects to the left, but the spin makes it come back to the right. So deflection is it moving to the left, and swerve is the curve back to the right. Okay, now let's talk about something else about English. When you're putting English on the ball, the more elevation you have to your cue, the more spin you get. So, a normal shot, we want to get as close to the table as possible without actually hitting it and shoot our shot, right? So that's just a normal draw shot. Um, didn't hit it hard, but you see it still had more than enough speed to get to the other end of the table. All right, now let's take that same shot, same speed, or approximately the same speed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate the butt of my cue. I'm going to bring it up about 20 degrees. So instead of shooting here, straight in, I'm going to raise the back of the cue. Same shot, same speed, different action. Um, did not hit the cue ball as low because I couldn't get to the same spot on the cue ball because of the elevation. So I was actually hitting into the cue ball instead of under the cue ball. Um, top English, same thing. I'm going to hit this, I'm going to hit top English. I'm going to give myself a little bit of angle and I'm just, I'm going to use top right English so that I can hit the rail over here and still control it. I'm going to hit it hard. Uh, and I'm going to see how much, how, how far around the table I can get. Okay. Pretty much maximum that I'm going to get is right here. Uh, it's right here. Probably can't see it, but it's right there and I'll point it out at the end of this. If I take that same shot and I elevate the cue, two things happen. One, because I'm elevating the cue, I'm now hitting into the table, which means the cue ball is going to hop a little bit. It's going to bounce off the table. And we'll talk about that at length when we talk about jump shots. Um, the second thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get so much more spin. And you can see it bounced because of it, which means I lost momentum and I lost spin. Um, my old spot was here, now I'm here. Not that much difference, but you do get a difference. The reason there's not that much difference is because of the bounce. You saw it bounce on the table, which, which is losing momentum, uh, and then you also saw that it had to overcome that backwards momentum and go forwards again. So you saw it kind of stop and then go forward, um, which means that we killed off a lot of spin there as well. So uh, the key being, the higher you raise the, back, the butt of the cue, the more English you get. And it has to do with the changing vector of where you're hitting the ball. Um, I, think, I think we're going to wrap this one up here. I know you want to get to that shot that I made um, and how I made it and how I figured it out. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, I, I've been playing with, with some of this extreme English for a long time. Let me tell you, if you don't have to use it, don't. The best shot that you can take is one that's pocket speed that you hit with no English. If you can do that and get your leave, do it every time. Um, you'll find that you're more accurate because you don't have swerve and deflection to deal with. Uh, you know, Top and bottom, fine. But uh, as soon as you start putting right and left English on it, uh, you start dealing with deflection and swerve, um, and, and it gets pretty ugly. Uh, you know, actually, let's go ahead and, and talk about that Mass City shot, since we're, we talked about elevating, about giving it more English, and uh, I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, just, just the general part of Mass A's, um, I don't want to get into uh, 
I don't want to get into the other uses of it in this one. We'll talk about those at length in the, in the next video. But let's just go ahead and talk about the basic mass A. So what is a mass A? A mass A is when you're hitting the ball uh, and you're hitting down into the carpet because the butt of your cue is elevated, so you're getting as much side English as you can. Um, usually side English. Sometimes, though, you do actually use, you, know, you won't be able to see that because I'm in the way of the shot. Um, so let's go over to this side where you can actually see the shot. Um, so let me talk about something real quick. When you elevate the cue and you're going to these extreme angles, so first of all, the more you elevate, the more you spin you get. So if I just need a little bit of spin to get down to that corner pocket, I can elevate it and just hit it soft and I get around it. Um, if I actually wanted to get to the corner pocket, I might elevate it a little bit more. Well, I'm bouncing off the rail. I'm hitting the rail first with the Q-tip, with the tip of the Q. Um, I, just, I don't need to go very far. I just need to go here and then have a curve over. So if I do just a little bit, it goes right in. Um, and because I'm spinning inside, I could actually hit this rail and it'll, it'll go short off the rail when it still takes it in. So when I'm the, the, the closer I am to that ball, the more extreme the English has to be to get around it because my angle gets wider, so I'm pushing it out more, which means I have to come back more. So as we move closer to that ball, I have to elevate the butt more, and I have to get around it. I actually hit it um, just barely. But you can see, the closer I am to this, the more extreme it has to be. Well, if I'm here and I need to come almost straight back into the one, then I have to go up all the way. And once I get to a certain point, I'm going to take my leg and set it on the table and use that to stabilize the cue. Oh, and that's a little bit too much. Let's do that again. Well, I would have made it if I hit it. Um, but you see people that do mass A's and they're out here like this, that's bad because you're freehanding, you've got no support, you've got no guidance, your cue's moving maybe not as much as this, but it's moving like that in very small motions. If you instead put your leg there, now you've got support. And you can make the shot and do it pretty, pretty consistently. Um, so if you have to shoot an essay, you never should be out here doing this in the center of the table really under any circumstances except the most extreme. Never say never, but almost never. Uh, on the other hand, if you're by the rail or you're here, where you can get your leg up to provide yourself some support, then go ahead and do it. That support makes a difference. Um, so the general, general theory of a mass A if this red dot is pointed straight up, the first thing to know is that the direction that you hit, your vector of travel, is from where you hit through the center of the cube. So if I come down on it here, it's going to go this way first. If I come down on it here, it's going to go this way first. If I come down on it here, it's going to go this way first. It's always going to be the opposite of where you hit it. So if I, if I hit the cue ball, let's say where that red dot is, then it's going to go from that red dot through the center of the cue ball. It's going to come out this way first. Uh, and it will come directly that way. There is no deflection on this shot. It will always go straight that way. So if I hit this on this red dot here, the center of the ball is there, it should come straight out this way. Okay, and I'm going to hit straight into it, and it goes straight out this way, and then when the English takes the curves. If, and it doesn't matter which direction I'm hitting with the cue, it's still going that way. 
So it doesn't matter that my cue's pointed that way. What matters is where I make contact through the center of the ball is the initial direction of travel of the, of the cue ball. The second thing is that if I'm doing an actual mass A, and so the red dots, let's put it here so you can see it. If the red dot's here, then my direction of travel initially is going to be this way, right? And then if I take the angle from that direction of travel to the direction of the spin, and I divide it by two, that's the direction it's going to go. So if I hit it here, it's going to go this way first, and then it's going to go half of, I'm, I'm hitting it at about 30 degree angle, right? Uh, and this is dependent on speed, again, and we'll talk about that in one second. Um, it's going to go here, and then the 30 degree angle would have it coming back here. So you split that, and that's where the cue ball is actually going to go. And remember, it's going to go there, and then it's going to curve back onto that line. <clears throat> so if I hit this here, it goes out here, and then it goes to my right. if I actually hit that shot. <coughs> and there you have it, right down the line that I predicted. Um, let me go back on that for one second. Um, again, just like with the drag draw shot, the harder you hit it, the further it travels before the English takes. You hit it soft, it goes a little bit and then turns. Uh, or turns. You hit it hard, it goes a long way, and then it turns. If you're close up on a ball that you're trying to get around, you can hit this soft and you will have better control. If you're way back here trying to go around it, you hit it, you hit it harder to get it pat to get it out. But you also hit a shallower angle so that it gets past it. You want it to follow that straight line and for the English not to take until after it gets to that ball. You don't want to go out here and then try to come that way. You want to go to here and then come over. You want to keep this angle as shallow as you can, um, simply because it's easier to do and you don't need as much spin. I said the higher the butt is elevated, the more spin you get. That's true you also get less control. Higher the butt is, the less control, which is why we do things like stabilize against your leg. Um, at the end of the day, speed is everything on these shots. You can hit a soft shot and get massive English out of it. You can hit a hard shot and it gets there, but it's killed off the momentum of your spin by the time it gets there. So all it does is it comes straight and then it's spinning to the side because it lost the draw that's on this. This is a draw shot always, by the way. Um, <clears throat> at one point I experimented with could you get top English on this by hitting across the center of the ball and having the cue go and, and the ball bounce back and then take off. Um, very, very difficult to do, very hard to control, not worth doing. Um, so, so don't... Uh, Don't always think of this as a draw shot. It's a drag draw shot with more velocity. It's a drag draw shot, no matter what the mass A is, all it is is an extreme drag draw shot, which is why I went over those first. It can be, you, you can do some pretty fancy things with it. Um, one thing you cannot do, uh, Steve Mizrak was famous for a commercial, for a Bud Light commercial he did where he made the cue ball go around two balls by, by spinning it with his fingers. Um, he actually called it finger mass A. Um, and, and for a long time people believed that he had actually made that cue ball go one way, reverse the English, go another way and reverse the English and come back and make the shot. The reality is he had a trip cue ball. It will always only turn once. Um, and it won't turn and then straighten back out. You can't make it go out, turn back, and then follow its initial path. You just can't do it uh, without making contact with something along the way. Physically impossible. Um, 
So that's uh, that's the very beginnings of the Mass A uh, in extreme English. Uh, in the in part two, we're going to start applying that to to situations on the table. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.